Hello, my friends. Welcome back to our Pray Together episode for today. This is February 17th, 2023. If you've submitted a prayer request in the last week, hopefully we had all of our technology lined out this time and everything you submitted is going to be prayed for on this episode. If you have a prayer request that you would like to have included on a future episode of Pray Together, you can do that by going to morningmindsetmedia.com dot com slash prayer. Now that's a new website for those of you who have submitted prayer requests before. So please make a note of that. Morningmindsetmedia.com slash prayer. Okay, it is time for us to move ahead with our Pray Together episode. And I wanted to focus for a moment just on the promise we find in Romans chapter 8 regarding our prayer. In verse number 26, it says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for, as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. So friends, when we bring these prayer requests before the Lord, we often do so with this deep longing for God to move, for him to do something in response to our prayers. And we sometimes don't know exactly what that should be. And you notice here where it says we do not know how to pray for things as we ought to pray. Friends, we have a great comfort here because Paul tells us that the Holy Spirit himself intercedes for us. He takes our requests that we stumble and fumble over, that we may not even know what to ask for, and he takes them to the Father himself. And he intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. So let's be assured today that whether you submitted a request or not, whether you know exactly how to pray for the circumstances you hear about today on this episode, we have an intercessor in heaven who is a member of the Holy Trinity, the Holy Spirit, who is making intercession for us today. Okay, we have a number of requests to get through today, so let's go to prayer together. Father, we have a sister in Christ who's writing to us today from the United States of America, and she's asking us to pray um, regarding a situation that she has already given us information about in the past, a friend's baby who was in the NICU, and the baby was called to the Lord, passed away this past week, and Lord, we want to ask you to bring great comfort to those parents who lost their little child, this time of intense grief. Father, we know it's not just the parents, it's the people who are in the family and are a little bit removed from the situation, grandparents, uncles, not not the parents themselves. But Father, I'm sure also there are people who work in situations like that, nurses, doctors, uh, medical professionals of various kinds who see this sort of thing often and their hearts go out to these families and their hearts are grieving because of the loss of a little child. So, Lord, we're asking you to be the God of all comfort, as you promise you are in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. And, Lord, we're asking you to bring a greater vision of yourself through this circumstance for these grieving parents, for the people around the circumstance. And, Lord, may you be glorified. May you be shown to be that comforter and that provider and that only one who can bring what they need in this circumstance. Lord, we ask you to do that in Jesus' name. Father, we have another anonymous sister in Christ who's writing from the United States, and she's asking us to pray for herself and her family. She says, first off, she has been dealing with panic attacks for the last two years, and it's made her fearful of everything. She can't even drive on the freeway. She can't take a trip with her family without having a panic attack. And she says it's just ruining her mental health. And I would suspect, Lord, it's just ruining her health, period. It's ruining her life because... This is a very debilitating thing. Father, we're asking you in this dear sister's situation to bring the light of the glory of your presence into her life, Lord. Give her the ability to see how intimately involved in her life you are, how much you are doing and controlling and, and making new things in her life because of her faith in Jesus. Lord, we ask you, to increase her faith. And the reason I say that is because in the book of John, when you speak of 
why we have anxiety, why we struggle. It's because we have little faith. And so, Lord, I don't say that in a demeaning way or a critical way toward this sister. I just know that we all need our faith to grow. We all need our trust in you to be immense so that we walk in security and we walk in confidence in this life. And so, Lord, I'm asking you to do what is needed to show this sister your great competence and your great presence in her life. She also would like us to pray for her father, who is having trouble at work. He said he feels like he's always disappointing his boss, even though he's trying very hard to do his best. And he's been working for this company for 12 years. Lord, I ask you to bring about a sense of peace in this man's heart. I pray that in the midst of these struggles, you would give him a sense of your presence. You would give him the ability to see you present and powerful and real in his life, that he can even more turn his heart over to you and give his cares and his his competence and all of those things into your capable hands, trusting you to use his efforts, large or small, to be a blessing to his family through the provision that the job provides, to be a blessing to his employer and to his his customers, his teammates. Lord, make him what he needs to be in that environment. And last, this sister says that her family is struggling on a financial level. It seems they just can't catch up on their bills. Father, I've been there. I know what that is like Uh, week after week, day after day, feeling like there's not enough money for the month. And so I ask you, Lord, for this dear sister, that you would provide, Lord, provide by giving new opportunities of income through different jobs and additional jobs, whatever's needed. Lord, I ask also that you would provide for them through helping them wisely restrain their budget. So pull back on things they don't need to be spending, Lord. And I don't say any of this with knowledge or criticism regarding their circumstance because I don't know it. But Lord, I ask you, to bring about your best in their circumstance regarding these finances and give them the faith to understand and to trust that if you are using this circumstance to further strengthen their faith and to give them a greater experience of you, they can rest in the knowledge of that as well. Lord, we have a sister in Christ named Caitlin who writes to us from the United States and she is coming to us with a very grateful heart today. She says she is seven months sober from alcohol after surviving a liver failure, and she feels like she has her life back on track. Lord, she has put you first again. She is working to get a home for her family. And Lord, we just praise you for this deliverance that you've provided in Caitlin's life. We thank you for calling the prodigal back to yourself. We thank you for the blessing and the encouragement that it's got to be to Caitlin's heart to see this deliverance and to see these positive things happening in her life, Lord, I pray you would give her a will of steel to resist the temptations that will come. Lord, that you will give her a heart of tenderness and devotion toward you that will draw her more deeply into her relationship with you. And Lord, that her family will be blessed by this new stability and this new freedom that you have provided for her. Father, she's asking us to pray for her for continued victory over this addiction. Amen, Lord. And for your provision and guidance for the home that they've been looking for. So Lord, I pray that you would bless Caitlin. I pray that you would just reach out in power to keep her sober, to keep her free from alcohol. And that is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 says she would abound in the holy living that you have for her to do more and more. Lord, we have an anonymous sister in Christ who writes to us from Malaysia. She is asking us to pray regarding her relationship with her boyfriend. She said they would love guidance from you in healing in their relationship. Apparently, there has been some brokenness that's happened there. Lord, she says they also need wisdom to take care of her boyfriend's daughter, that there will be clarity in both of their minds that you will align them with your will. Father, I can't imagine a better prayer than that last little part, Lord. They just want to be aligned with your will. I pray, Father, that you would guide them in truth. You would guide them in deep and lasting conviction regarding how they interact together, 
regarding the love that they express toward each other, that it would all be done in holiness. It would all be done with you right in the center. Because Lord, when you are the audience of one that we are living our life for, there is no such thing as a private life. There is no such thing as hidden actions or motives. Lord, we are before you all the day. We're before you all the night. Our heart and our mind, our motives are open to you. And Lord, I pray that this dear sister and her boyfriend, in fact, this entire family, would be drawn irresistibly to you and in devotion to you, Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name. Lord, we have a sister writing to us from the United Kingdom named Dedan, and she's asking us to pray regarding her relationship with you, Lord. She says she is 14 years old, and she feels that she used to have a great relationship with you. But now she finds her motivation waning. Now she finds herself in a position where it's just difficult for her to pursue you, Lord. I ask you, along with Didan, to give her the strength that she needs every day to overcome things like laziness and distraction and give her the motivation to move forward in her relationship with you on her side, Lord that she would be able to open her Bible, she'd be able to read and pray, she'd be able to move close to you by seeking out your thoughts on life and on the universe and on people and on her existence, which is all contained in your word. And Lord, I ask you to, to reach across that gap that she feels from your side and give her a touch of your spirit in a way that makes her know your presence, makes her know the reality of you. And Lord, that she would seek the knowledge of you that will lead to the experience of you rather than the other way around. And to know that just like anything in life, the more she puts into it, the more will come out of it, Lord, in terms of the richness of that relationship. Father, I pray that your presence will be powerful in her life, that you will draw her into a deeper relationship with you in Jesus' name. Lord, we have an anonymous sister in Christ who writes to us from the United States. She says her family is going through a difficult time. Her mother is experiencing dementia, which has worsened in the last six to nine months. And their family really needs direction and peace and rest and strength from you, Lord, as they navigate through this difficult valley, as she calls it. And Lord, I understand this request. We have family members who are dealing with dementia right now. My father passed away having had dementia for many years prior to his passing. And Lord, I know it could be a struggle for the family. It's it's painful to watch. It's frustrating at times to deal with. And God, we can't forget the person who is experiencing the dementia is just so discombobulated, so disoriented many times and confused and and their life is a confusion for them many times. Lord, we're asking you, Lord, to bring great grace into this dear family's life as they are investing their time and their love and their energy in caring for this dear woman. And Lord, that you would come into the situation with an overwhelming blanket of your peace and of your presence that yourself will be the center of all of this, Lord. And we're asking you to bring about everything that is needed, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray also for a sister from the United States named Jennifer, who says she is 27 years old in February of this year, and she wants you to put her on the path toward marriage. She's been in two relationships that have both left her feeling unfulfilled, incomplete, and she feels lonely and depressed. Lord, I pray that you would do the work in Jennifer's life that you have planned to draw her close to yourself and to craft her into the godly young woman that you are wanting her to be, that she will be guided step by step toward that godly, uh, masculine, um, leading, humble husband that she needs, Lord, And that you will do that in your perfect timing, Lord. Give Jennifer the grace to rest in your plan. And Lord, I really mean that, to rest in the sequence and the timing of what you're doing. Knowing you can be trusted. Knowing you are working for her good. Knowing that her 
her great desires are placed there by you. And Lord, that she can become more and more fulfilled and satisfied in you as she's waiting for this sub dream, should we say, to come true, because you really are her dream. You really are the one who wants to be her greatest resource, relationally speaking. And so, Lord, we're asking you to do the work in Jennifer's heart, do the work in her husband-to-be's heart, to make them who they need to be, to be drawn into this relationship that Jennifer's longing for. Lord, we have an anonymous sister in Christ writing to us from the United States who would like prayers for her and her family. She said it's a difficult time. Her sister has been spreading lies, negative rumors uh, to the family members about her family and is really just trying to pick a fight with her. And Lord, our sister says she's been angry about this behavior and, and almost got into a physical altercation with her sister. But she remembered that the scripture says she would be ang- we should be angry, but not sin. So Lord, I want to thank you. Oh Lord, I bless you. I bless your name for bringing the truth of your scripture to her heart and to her mind, enabling her to restrain herself by the self-control provided by your spirit to step away from that circumstance. Lord, I ask you to give her a sense of, of entrusting herself and her family to you, Lord. While this difficult situation continues, I ask you, Lord, to bring about great peace in her heart, great comfort knowing that you are working all things together for the good of those who love you and are called according to your purpose. And Lord, that you would intercede in this circumstance. You would step in and bring about resolution, bring about restoration between these sisters, bring about healing in the heart of her sister, Lord. If there are things there that her sister is feeling embittered about or resentful of, may they be able to work it out, Lord. Could this dear sister have an opportunity, Lord, to show her sister the the grace that Jesus brings and the, the forgiveness that he provides and the humility of Christ to confess any wrong she has done, to lower her own pride and defense and give that gift of, of humility to her sister, Lord. We don't know the circumstance, but we know that all the time humility is needed and grace toward others is needed. So Lord, we ask you to give her insight to see what's needed from her side in this circumstance. Lord, we have a brother in Christ named Matthew writing to us from the United States, actually from the state of New York. He's asking us to pray that he would be a doer of the word and not just a bystander watching your miracles and sitting there waiting for the next one to come. Lord God, I love this demeanor. I love how Matthew expressed that. Lord, he's, he's quoting the book of James that tells us to be doers of the word and not hearers only. So Lord, I ask you to work out in Matthew's heart that holy determination and that godly conviction that he wants to be obedient to his king, Jesus. He says his life has been a miracle and he owes everything to you. And he wants to be a beacon of light in the world in which he lives, that he can speak the word with authority and display your glory properly with no hesitation, no reservation, no uh, desire for reward or acclaim, but rather, Lord, that you would be lifted high. Lord, again, I love Matthew's heart. I love what he's saying here. I love the desire he has to be a humble servant before you, the mighty king. Lord, I ask you to give him the right picture in his mind of his position in your kingdom as a servant, of his humble heart that needs to be uh, expressed through service to you. I ask you, Lord, to show him the great and mighty ways you want to use him and that he would just simply and humbly obey step at a time, one thing at a time, without huge dreams, without huge ideas of what you might do, but rather, Lord, just a simplicity of being a child who obeys his father step at a time. So, Lord, take him deeply into your word to understand the commands you have of all of us, the kind of lives you want us to live, and make him a man who is busy in those things, living and acting in the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask you to do it in Jesus' name. Lord, we have an anonymous sister in Jesus who is writing to us from South Africa. She is asking us to 
pray that you would provide for her a new job. She said she feels really stuck and uninspired in her current job, and she's very frustrated as a result. Now, Lord, I know about jobs uh, and the frustration that can be felt there. I've been there many times in my life. I know how uh, our desires often can be more than what the job opportunity presents, more than is even able to happen in that particular job. But Lord, I know also that you provide for us opportunities in those jobs to grow in our character, to grow in our faith, to trust you in ways we wouldn't have if we were in a position that was more perhaps ideally suited for us. And so, Lord, I know there's a balance there that we have to understand and we have to be content with. And so, Lord, I am praying for this sister, first off, that you would provide for her abundantly through her employment, whatever that is and however you want to do it, Lord. We praise you for being our provider. We pray also for this sister, that you would give her eyes to see the opportunities that she has in her current job to serve you through serving others, whether that's employers or coworkers or customers. Lord, whatever it is that she's doing, give her eyes to see the ways she can do it with all of her heart, working for you and not for people. But Lord, also, We ask that if there is a role that you are preparing her for, that is one where she will be able to use her gifts and the desires you've placed on her heart and do so in a way that's more fulfilling for her, Lord, that you would open the doors to that soon, Lord, that you guide this dear sister in Jesus' name. Lord, we come next to a request from an anonymous sister writing from the United States. She is asking us to pray for healing and restoration in her marriage. The circumstance appears to be that her husband was involved in an affair of sorts that lasted five years. She calls it an emotional affair. So apparently there was no physical uh, contact or, or adultery in that way, but he was engaged with another person on a deep level, communicating on an intimate level with this person who was not his wife. And this dear sister in Christ is asking us to pray that she can get past all the things that she has seen in writing. I assume this is texts and emails and letters. She wants to be able to recover from the painful injury that she's experienced of remembering the dates and the times and the topics that her husband discussed with this other person that she feels has robbed her of five years of her marriage. Lord, I want to ask first of all, that you would work a very very thorough and godly repentance in the heart of this man, that he would be committed with all the strength your Holy Spirit can provide him, Lord, to breaking off every contact with that other person, that he would do so in a way and he would maintain it in a way that gives his dear wife confidence that it is all in the past, it is gone. And Lord, that he would repent in a way that shows her the devotion and the care and the concern that he has for her and that he would repent of his sin thoroughly and be able to show through his humility, his willingness to make things right and to be an instrument in your hand to bring healing in her life. Lord, as that that works out, we ask that you would bring forgiveness to the heart of this dear sister. She'd be able to forgive her husband as you've forgiven her. She'd be able to conquer her fears And she'd be able to step back into the relationship with zeal and with faith that you are the healer who is bringing about this great restoration, Lord. But I'm so proud of this sister that she is still in the relationship, that she is still pressing forward. And Lord, I have to believe that she's there because she knows you can bring about a restoration. Father, I ask you to do so. I ask you to bring about great transformation that you would repair every damage and bring this marriage back to a level of intimacy and growth and connection that they never have experienced before. Father, a sister, Keisha from the United States is writing, asking us to pray for mental, spiritual, physical, and emotional healing for her that comes from past abusive relationships and abandonment that she's experienced. She says she wants to be able to forgive those who have hurt her and to destroy the strongholds that 
exist in her soul because of what she's experienced, Lord. I know the reality of this. I know that uh, bitterness and anger and, and, and feelings of insecurity and fears can all take hold and keep us in a place of helplessness and anger and hurt, Lord. I pray for Keisha that you would bring about the strength that she needs to know you are bringing about a, tr- a change in her own heart. You're bringing about the strength that she needs, Lord. I don't know what this journey might look like, Lord, but I know that you're going to walk every step of it with her. You're going to hold her hand. You're going to give her what she needs to step into the new season of life you have in store for her without fear, without a fear of failure, without a a fear of further abuse. Lord, I pray you will cast down any demonic forces that are arrayed against her in this. Spirits that would bring depression or fear or anger or resentment or bitterness and insecurity. Lord, I pray that she and her children would be able to grow in faith. They'd be able to be strong in their confidence that that their good father is holding them up, protecting them, strengthening them, and carrying them forward. Lord, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, our sister in Christ named Nicole is coming to us from the United States, and she is asking us to pray for her to be able to regain control over her life. Well, that's a broad statement, and I'm sure there are many uh, very specific circumstances that contribute to her saying it that way. And Lord, a huge part of that is that she describes losing the father of her children five years ago, says he was her best friend, and he died from a struggle with cancer. And she has struggled through that whole time for the sake of her children. And now they are grown. They've moved out of the home, living in other places, and she is struggling. She's had to sell her home. Uh, She's now in a new place with her, her pets. And Lord, she is just in a difficult place. And it sounds, Lord, like her current situation is a difficult one. Uh, She is living with a boyfriend. She is turned to alcohol and she's trying to break free of that. She's seeing the pain and the hurt that it's causing. Lord, I ask you to give this dear sister, first off, a sense of your presence in her life, that your arms are wrapped around her. You are are leading her like a father leads a daughter into a good place. But Lord, that she's going to have to make decisions and knock on the doors and say the prayers that not only build her faith in you and your will to do those things for her, But Lord, also uh, take her into actions of obedience to put herself in a context that is blessed, a context that is safe, a context that is godly and holy. And so, Lord, I'm asking you to give her the conviction to step into a situation relating to her boyfriend that is not one that is dishonoring to you, Lord. If they are living together and not married, I pray you would provide for her a way to live somewhere else for the sake of honoring you, honoring you first of all. And Lord, I know there are a lot of circumstances. There are a lot of conditions that need to be met in order for that to happen, for her to live safely, to live affordably, to live in a place with her pets, all of that. But Lord, I ask you to show her that great miracle and to give her the boldness and courage to step into it. In Jesus' name. Lord, our sister Renee comes to us from the United States with a very heavy heart. She says her son committed suicide on February 9th of this year, and he was an unbeliever, and her heart is so crushed. Oh, Father, I, and my heart is heavy as well. I just can't imagine the, the full scope of what Renee must be feeling right now. Lord, I ask you uh, to give her great comfort, give her great strength, the ability to trust you and not to turn toward anger, the ability to rest in you rather than being anxious and fretting. Lord, I ask you to bring about peace and healing for his, his widow and for his sister, Renee's daughter. Lord, there's just so much, so much pain here, so much grief, so much loss, so much just getting through the circumstance day by day, Lord, has to be so agonizing. I just lift up our dear sister Renee. I pray your Holy Spirit would just surround her. Just wrap her in a blanket of your love and your presence, Lord. I pray that everyone involved in this circumstance 
would be just able to rest in you, Lord. So able to to be, Lord, just, just at home in you. That's what comes to my mind, Lord. So many questions, so many uh, agonizing unknowns. Lord, give them peace. Give them your great peace. In Jesus' name. Father, we turn to our next request from a brother in Christ, Julian, who's writing to us from the United States. He says he's going through a difficult time, battling depression and substance abuse, and he is asking you to help him, Lord. He expresses here that he knows you're the only one who can save his life. Lord God, I agree with Julian's assessment. You are our Savior in so many ways, not just the forgiveness of our sins and moving into an eternal home in heaven with you, Lord. And I don't say that in a dismissive or demeaning way, Lord. Those are marvelous, massive provisions that you've given to us. But Lord, in this life as well, you want us to have life abundantly. And our brother Julian is in a place where he's not experiencing that because of this battle with depression and substance abuse. Things look dark. Things look difficult. Things look overwhelming, I'm sure, at times. And so, Lord, we're asking you through the power of your Holy Spirit to just shine the light of your grace and the light of your power into his life in a way that he can see that life piercing through the darkness and providing a strength to him he did not know, he has not known. And Lord, that your deliverance, your delivering power would just overcome in miraculous ways, that you would open doors for him he didn't even know were closed against him, that you give him healing in his own soul, that the things that have driven him toward substance abuse and toward uh, depression uh, would be restored, would be healed, would be set right. Lord, whatever needs to happen there, Lord, we're asking you to do it in Jesus' name. Lord, we have a sister in Christ writing anonymously from the United States who's asking us to pray for a handful of things here. First off, she is going through a very difficult time uh, trying to heal from betrayal and trauma, to be able to grow stronger in her faith and to trust you no matter what happens. Lord, I know that this sister uh, is doing the right thing by coming to you, seeking you for the emotional healing that she needs. Lord, we ask that you would bring about just a great ability to see you present and real in her life. Lord, she says her 40-year marriage is really the source of all of this. Her husband moved out 18 months ago, and she's trying to to recover, to move past the pain. And Lord, I I can't even imagine. I don't know the, the difficulties she must be going through. But Lord, give her the grace that she needs for every day, Give her the ability to move forward, uh, to relate rightly with this man who has left her, uh, and at the same time to be in a safe place for herself emotionally. Lord, I pray that her husband would be able to break free of the addictions that he has found himself in, that he could stop believing lies from the enemy, that he would uh, break free of all the chains, Lord, because you come in to set him free with the grace and power of a personal relationship with Jesus, Lord. I ask you to bring about great deliverance for him. Lord, to break him free in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for this dear sister's daughter also, an adult daughter it seems. She's been in a long battle against cancer, and she's very, very weak physically after undergoing radiation treatments. And the treatment seemed to be successful, but Lord, the toll that it takes is such a such a damaging thing. I pray that you would give light and hope to this dear daughter. You draw her to yourself in fresh ways and in powerful ways. And Lord, that you would just make her recovery a reality and give her that hope ahead that she can see and be driving toward, Lord. Our sister also is asking us to pray for her adult children and her grandchildren. She desires for all of them to grow in their faith or in the, in the cases where it's applicable, come to faith in Jesus in the first place. And Lord, what a heart, what a heart of a mother and a grandmother. We're praying, Lord, that you would do these things, that you would bring about that spiritual transformation that only you can do, 
that your Holy Spirit would convict and draw and grant repentance and bring about that transformation of changing darkness to light, changing hearts of stone into hearts of flesh. Lord, make that the case for this dear mother, this dear grandmother. We're asking you in Jesus' name. Lord, we have a sister in Christ who's coming to us anonymously. She writes from the United States as well. And she says she prays to you every day and she feels like she is invisible to you. Like she's just a body with no soul. But she wants to be closer to you, Lord. She wants to draw near to you. And Lord, I pray that you would show her in very real ways the truth of Jeremiah that says, if we draw near to you, you will draw near to us. And Lord, I don't know the reality of her circumstance and the things that she's done and hasn't done. But Lord, I pray that you, by your Holy Spirit, would guide her in knowing how to seek you knowing how to seek you out, Lord, and that she would do so with a tenacious, determined attitude that is driven by your Holy Spirit, that is fueled by your presence. And that, Lord, in that pursuit itself, she would see you and she would find you, enabling her and empowering her to come near to you. Because, Lord, what you want for your people is to be close to you. What you want for everyone you're calling to yourself is for them to have an intimate experience with you and to have an experience based on truth, based on uh, the reality that is more than intellect and more than knowledge, Lord, but a deep uh, residing and abiding connection with you, Lord. I pray you would do that in this sister's life. In Jesus' name. Lord, we have another anonymous sister writing to us from the United States, asking us to pray for her husband regarding his faith. She says her family has been tested over the last few years, and she feels that several of them are failing. Um, Her husband is experiencing anxiety and anger, and he is strayed away from being a man of God, Lord. She's asking that he could be drawn back to you, Lord, that you would pull him back to yourself. She says it's affecting their marriage and relationships with his family. Lord, we just pray that you would dispel all the discouragement in his heart, that you would undo the damage that exists there, that you'd bring healing where it's needed. You would bring a a strengthening of what is weak. Lord, that this family, this, this man who you've appointed to lead this family would be restored and strengthened and, and supplied in every way that he can lead his family with courage and with confidence because he knows you are his king and his sustaining power, Lord. Do this work of transformation in his life. Her sister asks us also to pray for their three-year-old daughter. She has severe struggles with constipation. And Father, I don't know what could be causing that, what's going on in her body, but Lord, we ask you to bring healing. We ask you to give Uh, this dear mother, wisdom about what the child eats, what is contributing to this, Lord, that this dear little girl could be healed. We're asking it in Jesus' name. Lord, our sister Jasmine writes to us from the United States. Uh, She says she is in some circumstances that she has no control over, but at the same time, she wants to have peace and happiness, protection, uh, less stress, And Lord, she mentions forgiveness as well. I don't know how all those things fit together, but I ask you, Lord, to drive away anxiety, drive away fear, drive away that that anxiousness we can feel about the unknown, what's going to happen and the what ifs and, and all of those wonderings, Lord, that can cause us to step into a place of, of non-faith. Lord, I pray for Jasmine. You give her the ability to see you as her provider her protector, her constant companion. And she would not only see you there, but she would see your mighty strength. She would see the fullness of who you are on her behalf as her caring father, her loving friend. And Lord, that she would be able to just rest in that place and let go of the fears, the dangers, the, the anxieties, the bitterness, the, the, the things that would hold her down, Lord, would be stripped away. And Lord, that you would become her light and her sustaining power. She's also asking us to pray regarding her semester of college, 
that she'd be able to make good connections with good friends. She'd be able to find employment that is fitting for where she's at in school. Lord, I ask you to bless her with all those things. I ask you to give her just your great provision of a strong, godly friends who are able to come alongside her and they could connect on a deep heart level and be a sustaining and strengthening support to each other. Lord, we have a, a sister from Mozambique who's writing to us, Viviana, and she's asking us to pray for her father's heart to be softened and for her mother to be able to get a job. Lord, let's just stop there. There's a few other requests here, but I want to pray first of all for this man. Uh, when she says his heart needs to be softened, I don't know what that means, but Lord, I can I just have images coming to my mind of a, of a self-sufficient man, strong in his pride, um, standing in a resistant, kind of obstinate way against the world, perhaps, uh, against the, the correction or encouragement of friends. Lord, I don't know the circumstance, but I, I know men. I know we can be stubborn. We can be uh, proud. We can be uh, the very opposite of humble. And Lord, you want men who are your leaders to be humble. You want us to have a humble heart before you to be servants of the King. Lord, I pray for this, Father. I pray that you would undo the damage that has caused him to be hard and caused him to be unrelenting, caused him to be inflexible. Lord, I pray you'd bring healing, you bring transformation, and you would humble him in a way that enables him to receive the gift of humility, receive the gift of transformation that you have for him, Lord. And I thank you so much for Viviana's uh, just just wonderful heart to pray for her father in this way. Lord, we pray that you would provide the employment for this family that's needed. The father could do his part. The mother can do what you're calling her to do. And Lord, that in it all, you would be able to uh, provide for them a, a vision of yourself as the one who is tasked yourself with the provision of their home. Lord Viviana asks us also to pray for her to be able to deal with her anxiety that she feels. Lord, um, we pray you would strengthen her faith. You give her the eyes to see you as, as who you really are, her strong provider and king. And Lord, uh, I pray that you would lead her in her life. You would lead her step by step to take steps of faith, confident that you're providing and taking care of her in those steps. And Lord, as she moves forward in her education, we ask you to show her what it is you would have for her and how she should step forward in faith in light of it. We pray that in Jesus' name. Lord, we have another sister in Christ writing to us from South Africa. Her name is Non Lanha. I, I, I'm, I know I'm not pronouncing this correctly. I'm going to try again. Non Lanha, it looks like. Maybe, that, maybe I've gotten it close, Lord. You know her. You know her heart. You know what you've created her for and who you've created her to be, Lord. She is asking us to pray for a situation in her marriage. That she and her husband will be able to communicate clearly with each other. Lord, I pray that you would give both of them a desire to know and understand the heart of the other. That they'd be able to draw together in a place of intimacy and unity in their marriage. Lord, that you would bless them, you would bless their family with your grace and with your peace, that you'd overcome conflict, you'd overcome dissension in places where they're at odds, and Lord, that you would portray through their marriage your great love for your people and your people's honoring, respectful, and generous response, Lord. We're asking you to do a miracle here in ways that are needed. We, we don't know the details enough to ask you for specifics, but Lord, we do know you want that marriage to thrive and you want your good name to be lifted high through their marriage. So Lord, we're asking you to do that in our dear sister's marriage in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray that you continue to give the grace and the provision needed for my wife and I to continue the work of Morning Mindset Media. The podcasts that we're producing, the things that are going on uh, behind the scenes where we need help. We need strength. We need encouragement. We need sustaining power. Lord, provide those things. And in it all, enable us to be wise, enable us to be humble, that the devil or his cronies would have no place to come in and discourage, to come in and tempt us away from you, to draw our hearts to the things of this world rather than the things of your kingdom. 
Father, that you would protect us, you would preserve us, you would guard and guide us in every step as we advance the cause of the morning mindset, as we move forward with Digging Deeper, the Partners Only podcast, as we move forward with the God-fearing kids and the parents who raised them podcast, as we continue recording to prepare for the launch of the marriage podcast, You and Me and Jesus, Lord. Give us everything we need to do so effectively, full of grace and truth, and with the humility that's appropriate to the endeavors we're involved in. Father, we continue to pray for the ministry and the work that's going on with not a needy person. Lord, first off, bring the right needs for us that you would have us and, and the listeners and, and participants in the morning my set to meet. Father, we ask too that you would bring generous donors who would help meet those needs quickly and with the right spirit and attitude, they'd be able to give generously and uh, delightfully, Lord. You say you love a cheerful giver. Make us cheerful givers as we meet those needs through the cooperative ministry of not a needy person. And Lord, as we know, there are um, steps forward in the, the plans you have for us, but we don't always know what they are. Lord, you would guide us. Give us everything we need to live the life we are to live, the calling we're to fulfill. And Lord, I pray also just for my own family, sons and daughters, you continue to walk with them. You continue to give them the grace to to put you first in their lives, in their marriages and families. Lord, for those who are unmarried but wish to be married, Father, that you would provide the great miracle of an open door to meet that person you've appointed for my two dear daughters who desire to be married. Father, I ask that you would give them wisdom. You give them a, a holy conviction to maintain the standards of, of purity that you've given them. And Lord, that you would move them into a relationship that's like none other that they've had. One of, of mutual respect, one of humble submission to you, one where uh, the man that they're, they're encountering would be uh, just full of holy conviction, holy strength, a desire of, of love for you that uh, they've not experienced so far. And Lord, they would be humble men, ready and able and willing to sacrifice in loving the woman you place in their lives. Lord, I ask you to bring this about and to do so quickly, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, friends, thank you so much for praying with me today. If you have a request you would like to have uh, submitted for consideration on next week's Pray Together episode, you can submit that by going to morningmindsetmedia.com slash prayer. You should see a URL link to that page in the description of this episode. Thank you, my friends. God bless you. Let's pray again together next week.